Cabernet. Cabernet. A Cabernet. Cab Sav. Cabernet. <laughs> Welcome back to what are we calling this? Spit and sips. Spit and sips. Spit and, spit and sips. sips. Like spit and chips. Yeah. Spit and, spit and, spit and, chip. spit and sips. Episode. Sip and spits. Episode X. I think we're up to about five or five or six of these by now. Yes. Yeah. Episode V. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I've um, got some more stuff that we want to talk about today. We're going to kick off with Noah. You've got a tier list that you've a put together. I'm very excited. Yeah. About we're this. going straight into it. I love it. The um, internet is buzzing with tier lists these days, so we thought. Yeah. Why not oh, look, I was just my like, brain. What do we talk about? Um, and so I thought we'd do like just a fucking classic tier list, which is S A B C D. Yep. Um, and I thought we'd do. What does the S, S? stand for? Yeah. Like, is, was... that, is that God tier? Un- undefeated, like just undisputed perfect. But yeah, what does the okay. S stand for? Supreme. Supreme. Superior. 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 Yeah. So it's know. like superior Supreme. A, B, C, D. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about their <laughs> ranking system <laughs> we here. We're going to come up with a new acronym. A- anyway, a-, a-, plus anyway. A-, plus a plus A, B, C, D. S tier. Sweet. S tier. S tier. Um, so Super. I thought it's something that I think we'd all know a decent amount about. It is cool. wine related. Mm-hmm. Uh, South Australian wine regions. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yep. I'm gonna have. Yep. Mixed. That, mixed. I think there's gonna be some hot takes. But I need some wine in the glass first. No, of course not. What are um, we drinking? Disco poppy. Disco so poppy. This is Disco poppy. This is from Beyond the Glass, uh, who kindly gave us a nice little six pack. Um, I'm gonna have to hand this over to you guys. Yeah. Uh, and this is the Disco Puppy. Oh, it is a Marsan uh, from a the Riverland, just to <laughs> just a little dribble. Just a little dribble. Um, a Marsan from the Riverland um, in. Um, Chuck some in locks. Yeah, of course, uh, which we I guess is a good little reference to the the, the last the uh, Gemma's first blind tasting, uh, where we had the Rusan, which Yikes. she hated, and now we're having yes. the uh, kind of like a sister variety. So mm. the funny mm. thing about that Rusan is two people I know that are very into wine are under the impression that my opinion's just going to be wrong. So they went on the Discord, right. went to different drop, and bought the Rusan. That's awesome. You yeah. sell wine by hating it. Yeah, they yeah. were like, they were like, I just this don't agree. Gemma hates, and therefore people love. Well, yeah, they were just so like, there's, there's no way that that this is a bad wine based on this producer. Like, what are you talking about? Our number one wine and number one selling wine is undoubtedly Esoterico, mm. uh, Unico. Which, if you navigate to, we've covered this before. James Halliday's actual review of it. Yeah, is, no he, said, he calls it a failure. Yeah. Uh, so there are people out there that clearly kind of go, it, it is just as helpful to know what you dislike or, or disagree with about another individual. Mm. Kind of go, but I like whatever that person disagrees with. Right. This is a good wine, by the way. This is like yes. a cracker. It's very good fun. Uh, a little skinzy, skinzy Marsan. It's got a little bit of funk to it. It's got a little bit of a... Do you reckon Tabilk should change tack and uh, and start doing some skinzy Marsans? Yes. I think um, so. I think Tabilk should do a lot of things differently. Come on, differently. Tabilk. Um, <laughs> anyway. South Australian, uh, but yeah. South Australian wine regions in a tier yes. list. Yes, tier exactly. Way. So we've gone with the uh, Adelaide. You, he's actually got the tier list maker. Yeah. like. App. So I'm going to be uh, screen sharing this as well. Uh, screen recording this so everyone can look at it while we're doing at home. Uh, Excellent. Which is fun. <laughs> Have fun editing that oh, into this the is video. Oh, awesome. <sighs> Sorry, this is fantastic. We're Technical get... difficulties really yeah. quickly. This so is... we, I've gone with the classics. We've got um, Adelaide Hills, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah. Clare Valley, Barossa, McLaren Vale, uh, Langhorn Creek, um, mm. Coonawarra, uh, mm. Southern Flurio, the Riverland, and Eden yeah. Valley. Okay, cool. All right, so we should start at the top. Uh, or are you, you going to you're gonna, you're gonna rank Hills. them and then we're going to either no. agree Let's just get me uh, acclimatised first. Uh, <laughs> I'm really just getting my bearings. You don't reckon we go talk about each region and then decide where it goes rather than... Or do you have... Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying I'm going to put out a region and everyone's going to go, what cool. do you think? Yeah, and then yeah. we're going to likely debate and uh, have some real, real honest chat. I have agreed. no opinions on anything other than Adelaide Hills wine. I oh, and, and Riverland. vehemently disagree. I you think you. I yeah. think you have opinions on everything, Gemma. Thank you. This is actually That's very what true. That's says. <laughs> um, says I should have been a lawyer. Uh... Oopsie daisies! Oh, oh, right. I fucked it up immediately. Um, is this sorry, the, is, gang. This the, is this the screen record function? Yeah. I fucked it up. Immediately. Don't worry about screen recording. We'll screenshot. We'll screenshot. We'll screenshot the final yeah. product. We'll I don't know what I've done product. here. I've broken this fucking thing. 
Um, anyways, yeah, I'll screenshot it later. Technology's hard. Oh, wow. I'm watching, I'm watching Noah work this computer, and it's pretty amazing. The computer's doing its fucking darndest. To make it really To make it really hard. I'll work. screenshot it later. Yeah, we'll <laughs> so, do, we'll do we'll it later. We'll screenshot this. That yeah. wasn't fucking challenging. Um, all right. Uh, well, should we start with the Adelaide Hills? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I what? like it a lot. S tier. S tier. S tier. 100%. Even bias aside. <laughs> Adelaide <laughs> Are you kidding? Like an Adelaide Hills Pinot? What do you mean? So yeah, good. Yeah, but is it based on so so this is the is it based on what it produces at the moment? I reckon or it's everything. It's, it's everything. It's 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 vibe, it's, it's, Marbo. it's general it's Marbo. <laughs> general vibe. Uh, I guess like also cellar door culture, I think that's pretty important. Yeah, yeah. Not much going on in the Um and then we quality of wine as well. Like mm. what is the, the top tier? Um I guess also sustainability is probably something we we could consider. Yeah. Um yeah. and like key varieties, stuff like everything. Hills S tier. So I many agree. reasons. Pike and Joyce. Brilliant. Yep. One, okay, Gentle cool climate, folk. great. Sustainability-wise, fantastic. Mm. The fact that um, uh, if you want to develop a winery here, you need to subscribe to a whole bunch of planning rules and considerations around sustainability Hard that the shit. other regions don't have to. So things like the maximum amount of... With, with a five specific notable exceptions, because there was only five licenses allowed, you can't produce over 500 tonnes in a winery. Wow. So they cap you for, for various reasons. Um, there is, uh, it is, you can't class, Adel saying Adelaide Hills is like Pinot territory is kind of, kind of like saying that Chile is like, Ch it's such a non-homogenous region that it can produce so many different mm. things, so many different pockets. Mm. Um, the fact that there is very little preconceived idea of what should be made here means that uh, it opens up creative expression for so many things. And I'll just say it, South Australian wine globally would be shit house if it wasn't for the Adelaide Hills because... We've noted other regions have just been been dropping in popularity, and Adelaide Hills is as a new young region of producers that a lot of people in their early days wanted to hate is actually holding up South Australian wine globally on its shoulders. You know, it's it's South Australian wine stands on Adelaide Adelaide Hills' shoulders in many respects, even though the vast bulk of money comes from other places in the state. It's B tier. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so essentially, the roads are too windy to get to the Adelaide Hills. Right. If you're on a wine tour, people are going to be throwing up left, right, and centre. This, this does in this does impact it. The cellar yeah. door culture is what challenging. Is on that basis, Barolo is B tier. What's Barolo? Dude, not in, this list. Sorry? not in this list, is it? Yeah, no, oh, no, but man. no, but you know, we're consider like it's a considerable factor. Like as far if you put it against other South Australian regions, as mm. far as cellar door culture, it is nowhere near at the top of it. Yep. Um, I think there, but I think the quality of the cellar doors once you get there is excellent. Some good cellar doors, but lot one hundred sucks. Just not a part, of, not a part of the Adelaide Hills. <laughs> Forget Iceberg. What's that? Mount Barker. Which is a part oh, of the Adelaide come Hills. Come on, mate. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. It's no, Adelaide Hills would be what qualifies as the Adelaide, Adelaide Hills, Hills District Council, and Mount Barker does not fall within that because it is his own. No to to, to no be fair, the Adelaide Mount Hills wine is. region does encapsulate Mount Barker. The wine region does, to be fair, but Mount Barker doesn't count. I, I. <laughs> what do you think it is, Noah? I'm gonna go. On, I'm, I'm on S tier. No, I'm on S tier. I love the wines. Uh, I love the culture. I love the community. I think it's great. I think uh, Adelaide Hills. I mean, is there's no way it's not getting put in S tier. We work for an Adelaide Hills based winery. The man who's paying. Us <laughs> I would to talk accept. About it I would accept S or A. Uh, all right, <laughs> we're putting it. We're putting it in S. -tier. As someone right, who's right. who's lived in the Adelaide Hills my entire life and gone to every other winery except for wineries in the Adelaide Hills, I enjoy the Adelaide Hills ones more because <laughs> they're so close it's to my really house. Also, really good camaraderie. Uh, yeah. But anyway, moving on. Moving on. Uh, all right, let's go weird. Um, let's go to Eden Valley. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, E tier. I thought it was in Victoria. E tier. E doesn't agree. exist on this. Yeah. But, um, It'd be on yeah. I didn't think that was here. Uh, so B, it's B tier. So, so uh, the, a, a winery from Eden Va Valley that you would know of, Henschke. I know Henschke. Henschke makes some nice wines. I'm going to have to re <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll oh, no, bring, it to, I'll the br I'll bring it to C tier. <laughs> Oh no, because I think there's another like thing here because Eden Valley is obviously a region within another region within sort of Barossa. I it's would like to Barossa. see it separated from the Barossa entirely. 100%. I think that's d d disrespect to the Eden Valley. And if you know anything um, about the geology of the places, there should be 100% reason why those that that should in indeed so happen. But like, I would actually go A tier because of its relation with Barossa, which we'll talk about what tier Barossa is in my opinion mm. later on. But I think it's A tier for sure. So, uh, like geographically, are just like the climates. Of Eden Valley and Barossa, just entirely different. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Eden Valley is higher, different. higher, right, more cool. altitude, cooler. So the Shirazes that we you get from there are a lot like 
more like Adelaide Hills style reds. Right, cool. Mm. Um, but you don't get like Pinot, you get more like lighter body Shiraz. So a lot of Riesling. Yep. Um, Hence why you want it to not be in part of the Barossa because yeah. it just isn't the, the same The wines are so, thing. Com- like, so yeah, wildly yeah, yeah. different. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Eden Valley makes Barossa look cool. Um, Correct, fair. Not exactly the hottest take, but hot enough. Lukewarm. It's, it's a lukewarm. Yeah, much like take. the climate in the Eden Valley. <laughs> um, I, Shut up. I'm going to go B tier. Uh, I reckon we should put that B tier with the consensus of you guys are like, what the fuck is it? You're like, yeah, it's cool. Um, so B tier. Yeah, I don't it is. mind that. B-tier. Also, Eden just not very cool of a name. You were kidding. Eden Valley. Kind of yeah, I don't think <laughs> I, I know one someone Eden. Someone named Eden. I knew someone named Eden. I also school. knew an Eden. Yeah. Was wow. She. Okay. So Edens you, don't exist in Queensland. <laughs> We, we That's all out. over the place. I didn't realize yeah, I, that. Uh, and I thought God's Eden country was, was in Queensland. Queensland. <laughs> yeah, well, and Eden, the Garden of Eden. You yeah. know, unless unless there's unicorns galloping around, I don't really know what to think about. I I I, I, I he of grace is indeed a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He made I, everything. All right, moving onwards. <laughs> moving onwards, another one. Uh, one another close one. to my heart, uh, Clare Valley. The Clare Valley. A uh, tier. Yeah, Clare Valley's got Aussie. a sick let golf me, let course. Let me tell you well. why. Let me tell you why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> golf course is golf tight. Course. Golf course is tight. I'll tell you why I say this. Because in the Clare Valley is where they produce the wine that goes in churches. Yeah. Okay, just just hold up here. Because you've just said something that's really quite critical to the reason why I believe Clare Valley should be A tiers. Because everyone knows it as the Clare. The Clare. It's the Clare. Mm. It's actually it's just Clare Valley, but everyone's like in the Clare Valley. It's just in Clare Valley. Well, my grandma calls it Lasagna, but I'm not calling her up on it. Calls it what? <laughs> lasagna? What's Lasagna? She calls Lasagna Lasagna. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> um, yeah. I just want to so get weird. on with it. Lasagna also I A-tier. think Clare Valley's S-tier. easily A or A tier. I am so happy to put it in A. Riesling's like synonymous with it as well. And shouldn't be. And it's also higher than the Himalayas twice. Like that's what how old it's not actually fuck? a valley, it's a collapsed plateau geology. Here's me that's cracking out the school. little little whiz bang little It's nice. It's inte- nice. intellectual snippets from Brendan. Collapsed uh, plateau is the name of my new band. Collapsed it's plateau. Like that. That's actually fucking sick. Isn't it? Um, 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 but yeah, they make the church wine there. Uh, yes, they do. They, they do. do. They yeah. do. Make yeah. the church uh, wine there. And uh, on the tenth day, on the eleventh day, God created Riesling. Uh, <laughs> no, that's. Uh, yeah, I don't Clay think Valley. there were that many Ten, days. On the ninth day, he made so too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Halliday <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't there. Uh, that was so first, the Riesling or the SO two. Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, okay, here we go. This will probably be an obscure one. Southern Flurio. I don't know no oh. wine from the Southern Flurio. D tier. Oh. Yeah, hard because like it's it's I have a lot of faith in it for so many different reasons, but they're really nerdy ones that no one would ever get. But like you're talking like Southern Fleury also including that it's like limestone coast and um it's not like Arthur's no, like, area. Uh, like Car- Currency Creek, um and oh, it's underrated, but it's yeah. it's not exactly like tear worthy. No, I really it? like the milk that comes from the Flurio. So they've got the that Flurio going milk for is Flurio fucking milk is excellent. excellent. They got that going yeah. for uh, the biodynamic milk. Good milk. D or C. Uh, uh, D tier. D. Yeah, I don't think it's got the recognition. It's not like notable. it's one of those things where I see Flurio, uh, like from the Flurio Peninsula, on a bottle of wine, and I think it's made by like a dairy farmer. Yeah, someone who's retired to the Flurio Peninsula, and it's just like, oh, I got a vineyard out the back. Of but you also had Brian Crozer with Tapa Napa, and he he was the one that really sort of really pushed the Flurio as being really high end Chardonnay and, and Pinot Noir, and he does a great job with it. So it's sort of untapped potential there. I think the issue is people's mentalities. Yeah, it's a marketing. Exactly. They, they, Flurio needs marketers. Yeah. Flurio yeah. needs 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 a bit of a, a facelift. You'll do it. Uh, I'll market it. for the Flurio. I'm, not, I'm, not I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, milk. <laughs> yeah, Go milk. Uh, I don't got milk? Eat. No, got wine. Yes, <laughs> somewhat. somewhat. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> got right. caves. Uh, C was it C? D. 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 Yeah, D. D. All right, yeah, so I'm happy so with that too. Sorry. Um, all right, let's. Here's another one. Uh, I think I didn't m- mention it off the top, but here's one. Kangaroo Island. Oh, oh, oh D. D. Yeah, look, love the place, but uh, is that what? But they've got that one winery. Stoke. That's the Stoke got- is doing amazing work there. They've got um, Jacques Laton. I don't know what that means, but I'm talking about the winery with the view, and you can look through the like the the thing. Cape and you Jaffa. Look- you said Cape no, Jaffa? Is that oh, I or love is Cape Jaffa. I found a whale carcass in Cape Jaffa one time, but that's not on Kangaroo Island. It's not about wine either. So that's, uh, that's Cape Jervis. That's Cape Jervis. No, Cape Jaffa, not on Kangaroo Island. Uh, no, I must be thinking of a different one. Uh, Cape Jervis in 
So Cape Jaffa's near like Kingston. The takeaway here yeah, is that's not all here. No, nah, get honey from KI. Don't get wine from KI. Get honey nah. from yeah, KI. Yeah, like go there for a trip. There's been some good wines, just like Flurio, like Guru, amazing. Yeah, the the project that um, Dougie's What's doing that? with the What's Stoke that Winery, yep. the the one winery where everyone has their wedding because they've got the beautiful view. I don't know. I've got no idea. Yeah, but no. they've got a like. They've, oh, never mind. They've got a, like a binocular there. Unfortunately, to uh, for Ko, <laughs> we're going to put it in D tier. Uh, yeah. I I have great hope, and I think uh, the guys at the Stoke and Dougie, and also uh, best wishes to Dougie because he's a bit ill at the minute. Yeah. Um. So is. we got some we got some love for him too. Big um. Saw a blue ring octopus in Ko once. <laughs> fucking hectic. Um. Was it on the beach? It was in a rock pool. Oh, I almost yeah. touched it. Cool story. Yeah, they look, they're very touchable. Please <laughs> don't so do that. They're so cool. Uh, but yeah, we've got big love for the KI and hopefully it becomes a great place for wine in the future. Mm. Um, alrighty. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go to Kuna Wara. Uh, B tier. Mm, as a... As a mm, it's, a tier. It's very B-tier. reminiscent of like when we would go... It's like 2000s wineries, man. Like when we would go to the wi- the wineries as as kids, my dad and my grandpa would drag us out to the Kunawara. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You've got a bit of a relationship down there, don't you? Or it's travelled a bit? No, I did. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's Langhorn Creek. That was Langhorn Creek. Where's Kunawara? Yeah, Kunawara, uh, the, the, the one that you'd probably know. <laughs> I've heard of it. Is so Ma- I'm thinking Ma- it's in Magellan. The Magella. Magella, Magella's yeah. Magella the, big, Cab the big one. Yeah. Um, I just I just winds, remember winds, so uh, many bottles of Magella Cab Sav just in my dad's cellar. Yeah. And that is the problem yeah. with the Kunawara. It is the daddiest of wine it regions is. of it all is. fucking time. But it is. that's the reason why it's awesome. It okay, kind daddy. So, no, <laughs> yeah. it, but like it's I feel like it's not it's not really caught up with the times, but that's what's sort of cool about it. Like it's still very much like set in the late nineties, early two thousands. You go out there and nothing's changed. Also, a lot, um, like a lot of really good value because of that. Like mm-hmm. the the you can get some older cabernets that are like mm. perfectly aged for not a lot of money. Um, there's some cool people doing some cool stuff down there. Subel, yeah. um, Otilia, uh, mm. which made that Tashini, like light juicy red, which is fun. Mm-hmm. And incorporating the lime, the wider limestone coast, it's pretty cool. But I think it's B. Yeah, B tier. B tier. Happy, yeah. happy to sit. In Is that, that what I said? B tier. Well, I thought it was a winery, not a region, until just now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's been two years on this show, and I've still learned. Fuck all. <laughs> but you get a seat at the table, so that's fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. Um, I reckon that comes up after this segment. Yeah, you know, I reckon. Shots at the, shots bang at the bang. Um, so next, Langhorn Creek. Oh, underrated, but that, for that reason, that's the I'd say C tier. But yeah. it's underrated, B or C, but yeah. it should be higher. It's kind of similar to Lang uh, to Kangaroo Island, but we don't have. We've got probably a more benchmark of quality. I think is like you know, there's of course Bleasdale, which is the real icon producer mm. from the region, making some outstanding wine. So it has a bit of a leg up there. Um, so yeah, it like Langhorn mm. Creek goes at C. Um, and the, the photo I've got it literally shows everything underwater because flood irrigation's cool, man. Um, <laughs> Sick. Uh, all right, uh, Riverland. S tier. Wow, that's such a such a that's you know it's like, hectic. It is hectic, right? Because it's like Kangaroo Island, what like they you know Flurio, they need marketers, but this is the this is that's the thing. Like Riverland has managed to claw itself out of being, I think, regarded as a shitty bulk wine region that no one wants to know about to suddenly being interesting so i can only base my opinion off the riverland wines that i've had and they're all from here and they're all fucking fantastic Mm. like all the all the single variety single vineyard riverland wines we have are stunning yeah so there is no you can put the pistol away um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there is no <laughs> please don't find hey. me uh, yeah I the only Riverland wines really I've had are from here and I have no reason to th- say they're anything less than S tier mm. oh, that's very very nice it's either S or A the thing is like there's no tour- like I say no tourism but like comparatively against any of these other regions like there's World? just not a lot of sorry the Orange World there's what? Orange World. Orange World's out in the Riverland. It might be in Victoria. There's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of oranges. Tourism, though. Like, but uh, there is other tourism. Like People go to, to the, the Riverland. Riverland 
go to their shacks, which when I moved House here, I realized is not a shack. is like a it's mini a house. mansion. Yeah. Houses. <laughs> houses. Yeah, going to the shack means going to your four bedroom, three bathroom, two shacks story house Shacks are bigger than people's actual houses. What's, yeah. What do you reckon, Doyle? Riverland. I'm thinking B or A for Riverland. I don't think that the it's sort of got like the press like you're saying it's well marketed i don't mm. think it's got the prestige of some of the other regions that mm. we have talked about and will talk about um i think it's impressive that you can sort of grow grapes there so effectively given it's so hot and dry which is yeah. the kind of cool thing to be able to talk about but it's not it's not a region that when i see it on a wine list i'm like oh that's the gotta have it yeah, yeah. that's mm. the yeah. one that i'm launching into i but. i think for the, the i mean look, the vast majority of wines from the riverland are poor and cheap and unsustainably yeah. made that mm-hmm. is that is the icon of the region which i think has to bring it down a bunch of points i think that the, the fact that it's not at like an automatic d is, is impressive a, just like straight up. because of people like Riccaterra and um of course uh delinquente and people like that really propping up the region and great mm-hmm. farmers out there as well so i think b b for me b in the middle yep cool. b yep. it's doing, but doing I, well but i love that gemma's gone and keep doing straight s tier straight s tier um awesome Company woman. now uh the two, <laughs> I do my best. The, the two big boys uh we've saved for last the okay. um okay. barossa b tier mm. Bro, it's just it's straight up S tier. It's like, S it tier. Like it just is. Like I, 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 through talking this, I'm like, I'm like understanding how my position on it a bit more. Like I want to put Barossa as D tier, but it's not. Like Bar- people know Barossa. It yeah. is S tier. It, like, it, it, it has too much marketing. If the Barossa's and not, not enough here, Like what does the wine landscape in South Australia look like? Like when Shit. it's a huge tourism. You draw, need a Disneyland. The it's a nice place to go visit. I used to have a great piss up at a basketball tournament there every year. Fuck yeah, love the Barossa. Nice. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. I I'll I'll put it in A tier. I was thinking A as I'll well. I'll put it in A tier only because it's like it's all you ever fucking hear about. But that, for that reason, that, 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 that's but a like, problem. But like, that's is plenty. is it is it worthy of all that clout to be the 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 wine region that's recognizable for the state? Do I recognize it? I'd say A tier. I'd say A tier. It I is a very good wine region. Like like we like to sit here because we're in the Adelaide Hills, right? And we like to be like Adelaide we're Hills a cool little tier? you know we do natty wine and Pinot Noirs and we mm. do like pet nats and shit. And then like yeah, we've just sold our like you know seven hundred thousand bottle for the day. Uh, you know, and it's like yeah. straight up Barossa Shiraz and everyone's having a great time and are, mm. they're associating that with Australian wine. So it's sort of like, oh yeah, A tier at least. I yeah. think it's I think it's A tier, but I don't think it's S tier. There's just this like, there's just this hankering with me just going like, I don't want to drink a Barossa wine. No, so there, there's like just it's like, so old school. It is kind of over the hump a little bit. I think probably until probably like the year 2005, it was undisputed S tier, but now it's starting to just go on yeah. a bit of a decline. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I have great faith that there will be a big change in the Barossa. I think as far as Grenache is going to be the new thing and mm. like all of these other things, I think it's an A. Mm. Mm. Yep. Happy with it. Happy with that. And then uh, we have McLaren. McClosies. Yes. S tier. I think it's an undisputable S tier. Yeah, it's the best place to go on a wine tour in South Australia. It yeah. really is. Yeah. And, and I'd hate, I hate to admit that because of my bias. Mm. But it really is. Yeah, it's really cool. freaking Down the so much fun. Coast and it's beautiful. Yeah, and the it's wine's a, delicious. It's a, t- a ten minute drive from the beach. Sam Smith sometimes performs down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But if you you're lucky enough to be invited, <laughs> well, the fact you can take a bike to like several different wineries, like yeah. they've got great pathways. You know, they've they've just catered for it so well. I still traveling internationally, like talking about wine and slinging slinging skittles. Um, I still uh, encounter people going, yeah, man, the, like the meet the maker stuff that they used to run, yeah, you know, where they would fly people out, like that was just a regional thing that, that mm. people would get flown um, out to the Vale, and and beyond that as well, as far as like their champion varieties are inherently really suited to the climate. They're, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they're, it's the most um, organically farmed region in Australia. They have the, mm-hmm. cool. the largest mm-hmm. hectares mm-hmm. of organically farmed vineyard. The cellar door culture is great. The wines are excellent. The people there are awesome. It's kind of like it's almost faultless. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't pop mm-hmm. off queen slay mm-hmm. yeah. so who's in it Look, run through it what do we got alright we'll finish the list so in S tier we've got S tier we've got the Adelaide Hills and uh, McLaren Vale I'm happy with that uh, in A tier we have Claire and the Barossa B tier we have Eden Valley Coonawarra Riverland C tier we have Langhorn Creek and D tier we have Southern Flurio and Kangaroo Island oh man sorry guys yeah really starting on Flur- the little guys Flur- Flurio's Kangaroo Island's got a lot to claw back if there was an E tier I'd put it there and I'm sorry Dougie you, I love you and I love what you're doing and you're the on- you're basically the reason why some- yeah, something you're like the, the Riverland becomes B tier like yeah. that you're the the Ashley Ratcliffe you're the you're the guy making it happen yeah mm. 
Um, but no one else is. But I'm happy with that <laughs> list. I reckon that's pretty fucking good. It's not bad. That nice. is amazing. All right, we're going to screenshot that for commentary. Yeah. For everyone to look at. Uh, for, and throw it up on the Discord uh, for, for people to, to debate us. Uh, right. How good. About. On to the next little segment where I discuss hate comments. <laughs> <laughs> So if you watched the last episode of the podcast, you would know that I went on quite the... Uh, Tyrade. Eloquent... Okay. <laughs> eloquent discussion about young women in wine and young women trying to make their way into the wine world. Oh, sorry. Line. I was talking about your comments on Bruce Sorry, my, my no, apologies. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It's just yeah. on the, the last episode on the of the podcast. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and how intimidating it is to be a young woman trying to get into the wine world. Only to be on the most... Timely. How timely was this? This comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Really, so... The the first episode of Blind Wine that I did went up the same night that we shot that podcast. And there were a couple comments that tickled me and not in a positive way. Totally. All right, what were they? Um, well, one of them was just, I enjoy people who know what they're talking about, which is fair enough. I talk a fair amount of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's totally reasonable. But kudos to the person that jumped in then. It was kind of like going, that's sort of the point. We maybe, for people that have discovered the show, I think recently, more recently, might not be aware that it is because Henry's got the so damn good. Yeah, he's getting mm. so good at it. <laughs> yeah, I did, I, like reading those comments, I was like, man, they must not like the early stuff on this podcast mm. uh, or like early <laughs> stuff here at all because it is, it's ridiculous because when we started shooting that, like, there weren't any comments about like me being the person who didn't know anything and I don't know I can't I don't see gender or race so I can't pick a difference between you and I Mm. but obviously some people out there are and it's fun but rather like you ended up getting different comments you had had comments of encouragement yeah Yeah, comments going wow it's so good and refreshing to have someone who doesn't actually know anything just be honest with their opinions right but when when it's me someone said that I don't deserve a seat (laughs) at the table (laughs) because of my lack of knowledge it's like I'll get more knowledge the more I do it you idiot (laughs) (laughs) like but it does make it really hard yeah it must make it really hard when when I'm I'm, and like it was my first time doing it I was really really nervous Mm. and I didn't know like, I just didn't know what I was talking about. And, like, I'll get better as time goes on because that's how fucking knowledge works. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The more yeah. you learn, the more knowledgeable you are. So, like, yeah, my first episode was pretty shitty, but the next one will be better, and the next one after that will be better again. I think it's I thought it was relax. awesome. I think, I think it's worth pointing out that this is the overwhelming minority of the people that commented. Everybody else had, yeah, amazing, like, to amazingly yeah, yeah, kind yeah. And things to keep say. in mind, of all, the pe- of all the tastings that happened in that tasting, the only person to correctly identify something <laughs> to produce <laughs> it was me. to actually yeah. be yeah, Gemma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like so give worm her flowers yeah, yeah. honestly thank you <laughs> yeah. um but yeah it was just really interesting and timely and like you try and not read too much into it but the thing it's like where the fuck do you get off mm. I, I say you, you know I, I say get off the channel no fuck you that. you you come here you sit down with six wines no context and you tell me the variety and you tell me where they've come from you couldn't do it. No. I, I guarantee <laughs> that this white man couldn't do it. That's all. Gemma's hot takes. <laughs> Gemma's oh, hot takes. That was hate. It's going to turn into one hell of a YouTube <laughs> short. <Yeah. laughs> I can already yeah. see Loggy's eyes lighting up. Well done, Gemma. Yeah. Um, Thanks, everyone. Now, I've got uh, something that I want to talk about. Uh, okay. in sustainability in wine. It was this article that I was reading about uh, the packaging of wine and how mm. mm-hmm. ultimately mm-hmm. glass is sort of this double-edged... Not a great one. No, nah. it's a double-edged it's a, sword. It's an imperfect solution. Because it's yeah. good for storing wine for a lot of reasons. Like, it's mm-hmm. not reactive, it's solid, you can keep things in there for a long time. Infinitely recyclable. Infinitely recyclable, all of those sorts of things. It's good choice. Um, but then also the division... So you've got... Uh, talking about the transportation of bottles is really problematic because right. they're heavy yes. and they're not particularly an efficient way of storing large volumes of things when you're breaking them down into 12 packs and things Correct. like that. There's and a lot of negative space in a carton of wine. Yeah, a lot of negative space. And, you know, we're a winery that's really focused on sustainability. So I was just, I wanted to ask you, because I haven't asked you this for a while in terms of the sustainability we're doing with our bottling. What's, what's, your, uh, what's your long-term, what's the perfect solution for you? As a winemaker, what do you want? 
Well, okay. For, first and foremost, you got to break down. So the glass bottle, uh, the actual inherent issues. There's there's two. Uh, the transportation one. Well, that's that's that is something that can be fixed. That's independent of the glass bottle. Like mm. you could find carbon neutral ways to be able to transport things as we move to electrified vehicles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The the shipping thing doesn't doesn't re like shipping long distances doesn't really factor in uh, only for the fact that. Um, you're shipping so many bottles on a full ship, like an actual ship, mm. you know, which is full of containers, and each container has twenty thousand to forty thousand bottles on it. So the attributable carbon yeah, per it was like unit, three grams of carbon per kilometer. So for a it's actually it's, the boats aren't the issue, uh, and, and boats have plenty research. of other actual sustainability issues it. tied to them that aren't to do with carbon. We're just really narrowing down on carbon mm. on this one. Uh, the embodied, what's called embodied energy. Embodied energy is uh, when, say, concrete, for example, very high embodied energy mm. to make concrete, to ship it to one on site, to then, then, then also the energy involved with getting rid of it, right? The energy involved in making a glass bottle is really hard. You can't really um, uh, make a glass, like have a glass bottle manufacturing like facility that is 100% solar powered unless you use a significant amount of, of solar arrays yeah. because of the sheer energy it takes to melt glass. I didn't realise, I was, feel free to correct me on this, but I was reading online that once you turn on a glass blowing furnace, it basically runs non-stop for 15 years. Does, like, they can't. don't turn it off. Yeah, because the glass will, will uh, the, it's got a funny name, it's called a gob machine, which literally gobs out this, this molten glass and mm. then nice blows one. it into a mold. Um, uh, that machine basically is just sitting with like liquid glass in it all the time. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now, if you want to change the color of that glass, like they they would much prefer. Most glass manufacturers will prefer to build another whole facility to facilitate the making of a different colored glass bottle than to shut that one down because they can need to wait for it to cool down, which can take weeks mm. to then jump in there to then chip it out. Right, like yeah. these things are very inefficient. It's the whole process is quite archaic. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of room to move. Um, wine is one of the only um, uh, alcoholic beverages that has, has not managed to graduate extra accoutrement needed to be able to drink it. It's not socially acceptable to drink wine out of the bottle. No. Uh, even though we all hope it is and we can all joke about it, but it's, the fact of the matter is you can drink beer out of a bottle and you can't drink wine out of a bottle. It's kind of not even kosher to drink, say, gin out of a bottle, right? Mm. You know, so <laughs> <It's just laughs> <disgusting>. equally, <laughs> equally, we've now gotten onto premixes with spirits. So to drink spirits out of a small receptacle with yeah. the perfect amount of alcohol for one individual serving that is responsibly served. Wine still hasn't even graduated the responsible serve. Like we see wine in can, good and great. It's a move forwards for sure except for the fact that you're putting two to three, four standard, standard drinks. drinks in one can. Can. And yeah. people, studies have shown that people don't change the rate that they drink a can from because we're no. conditioned to it from being a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the rate that you consume um, uh, doesn't slow down that much. There is outliers to this, like sour beers and like uh, imperial um, stouts and stuff like that, where mm. they noted that consumption did drop a little bit. But um, no, in terms of sustainability at the moment, the best ones are going to be wine on keg, has some issues regarding the transportation thing as well that need to be overcome as well as a lack of the ability to be able to and this is unique to australia uh recycle soft plastics mm. because of I'm sure you can google it the red cycle debacle we had in australia yeah. at the moment um uh box wine also similar reasons about the soft plastics thing but still like it's it's a much better lighter way to be able to transport one but has a marketing problem like not dissimilar to the, the cans and beer thing though Cans in can, beer and can used to be regarded as um, like bogan. yeah bogan terrible yeah. Yeah. low Cheap quality beer. yeah and stuff like that and there's very good technical reasons why and the technical reasons um, uh, that were being marketed by Pirate Life when they first started kind of got everyone else on board with it they're yeah. like it's like a little mini keg it's fresher it can chill down quicker you can take it camping you can crush them down can, all the really good reasons that you have have cans I don't think there's a winery out there that's properly um, tackling casks box wine yeah uh, in the out. same way Unicozello as a terraco cask would love to I'd love to yeah love that'd to. be so much Little bagnums I, I love the concept of like Gunicozello Gunicozello Guna Guna yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, getting that it tattooed is, it is 100% a marketing thing because even they were talking about like the reducing just even reducing the weight of the bottles that you're making if you reduce mm. 
the weight of the bottle by 30 grams over a large scale for a large winery, you're yes. reducing the amount of CO2 required to yeah. A, make the glass 100%. and then B, transport well, it. In Sweden, they do this. Like in Sweden, they just announced that, um, you might know, it's like 420 grams is the highest uh, bottle weight they will I now th- accept I think if it's, you want to sell wine in their stores. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, I think it's even less than that. I think it's like 400 or 410 or something like that. Yeah. It's like the bottles are light as a feather. Yeah. And yeah. since That's the entire cool. purchasing system is run by the government, you have to apply through the government and they'll rigorously test everything. And if it's over by a few grams, like, yeah, see you later. You're you're right. Right. We're not, we're not buying we're it. it. We're going to, it's gone. Sorry. Um, so there is a lot of things, but yeah, I think the main issue is just like people aren't used to it. There's mm. a, yeah, a lot of negative connotation around like goon sacks and. There's, there's, well, yeah. And there's, I suppose there's the other side of the industry. I was just thinking, uh, sorry to cut you off. No, I, right. Um, like we see wine as a thing like a daily drinking thing which the cask the can works fine but wine is one of those few beverages that does mature and change and there is an entire whole arm of this entire industry arguably the bigger side um uh that will either see wines that are matured over a long period Mm. or want to sell a wine it's very hard to sell something in a cask yeah it will degrade i would love to see an entire cellar full of cask wine that would be so there's good. a great instagram account i think it's called chateau cardboard which literally takes like Brilliant. the world's greatest wines and then designs cardboard boxes of them mm-hmm. it's fucking we sick. should get them we should engage them to do one for unico yeah, for sick. esoterico I, I would love to be able to do that yeah i would just because like th- like then you think about it in like a, a mass drinking scenario and i'm not talking about like one person drinking heaps i'm talking you've got 10 people over going to fortune and and everyone wants to drink esoterico man i need to pull out like five bottles of this shit yeah i could have one cask that lasts the, the whole night are you kidding so convenient and uh, there's yeah. so many other convenient like for for like at home consumption casks have so many pluses like it's it, it put it in the fridge it'll last a month yeah like yeah. the um, amount of times i've opened a bottle of wine had one glass and then like yeah. The rest is gone. In a retail sense, it's great. The problem that it encounters is how do you work that into a, a restaurant or a uh, pub or a bar or yeah, something like that? Imagine look. someone coming up to your table and like, more wine, sir. <laughs> there, there are Brilliant. other alternatives. Um, so there's a company called Pack, uh, Packamama. Uh, which it's meant to be like like Mother it's Earth good. and packaging that helps Mother Earth and yeah. there's this company that does PET bottles they do these flat bottles because um, and this is the thing that's very wine industry to to there's here's a problem we're gonna fix this problem but while we're at it we're gonna do this one this one this one this one and I actually had met with them in Germany the actual owner mm. right now equally um, uh, from a like an intellectual standpoint, trying to change people's behavior to, to consume wine out of something that is not a bottle. It's very hard. So what they managed to do is they, um, uh, you know, they've got the PET bottle that looks like a bottle, except then they made it like flat, like a- um, uh, Hot water bottle? Like a hot water bottle, right? Mm. And then they're like, oh, but now you can fit more inside a package and there's less dead space. And I'm like, you know what? Just If you would just simply change the material that that bottle is made out of and turn it into a plastic one, mm. you better. plus you've got a pathway then. It's very hard. There's no real pathway to make um, quite mm. sustainable glass because you're always going to encounter the big problem, uh, which is the embodied energy. You've got to melt the thing. Yeah. Or ideally not break it, which means making thicker ones. And, and it, it's in, in, very impractical. But with plastics, there is such thing as algal plastics, bioplastics, grown plastics. Um, so there is a pathway of graduation then if you were to still have... And plus with plastics, um, and I suppose the big problem with plastics is the marketing problem. We think plastic, we think unsustainable. Yeah. But it's all a comparative thing. Plastics versus glass. Plastics have developed really well. We can do some cool shit with plastics now. Like we can do um, like oxygen permeable plastics. So we can actually control the rate of oxidation through the actual wall of the, the the receptacle. So what? Control the rate that the wine's aging at in terms of the oxygenation. Yeah. That's fine. We can seal it just as well and just as good as we can a glass bottle. Um, so I, I do think there's a lot of room to move. I think the, the best interim thing that we can action literally yesterday, as long as we... I actually even looked into trying to start one of these companies and Packamama is trying to design a, a plastic bottle for this purpose it's like just give me a normal shape bottle i'll pay for the mold mm. make it plastics and then we can put a pathway for algal plastics um uh and then we can you know it's just like sort of buying uh bottles or clothing that's made from sea plastics like there are so many different sources of plastic if you're going to use something that is, has been mined from the ground 
you may as well use it on the thing that you have no other alternative for. Mm. You know, we have plenty of great natural alternatives to lots of things that we use plastics for, but we have very little natural alternatives for the wine bottle. That's a good point. Plastics like would it. improve it. So <laughs> the future of sustainability is plastic in wine, which is <laughs> like which feels like end, yeah, yeah, or like uh, what do they call them? Poly, poly chains like like which is plastics but yeah. maybe not petrochemical plastics yeah nice if we'll, that makes any sense we'll find out well yeah. it'll i think there's going to be some progress to come yeah you just tickled an area of my brain Henry. i know i know clearly I was, uh, where did that come from that question just out I of was nowhere just scrolling the world of wine found out that they're using sailboats to ship like they've gone back to sailboats as opposed to diesel boats to send wow. things from uh, across the Atlantic at the moment, which is pretty cool. That's but fucking awesome. And they're like, it's more expensive, but it doesn't matter how much diesel goes up to because the yeah. wind's always the same. Uh, anyway. Uh, how would we like to play a game of options? That's mm. what I was thinking we move right on to. You guys are going to need to finish those two little yeah, we can disco pubs. This was Disco Poppy was absolutely... Del- I That's would, a really good wine. <laughs> I would never reach towards something like this. I don't know why. Like He's I'm, got a dog on the front I'm lane. really... But yeah, like, I don't know about Natty Wines, man. I've, I don't know. I've just not really branched into that sort of situation. We're getting there. Situation. Super reasonable. Yeah. yeah. I would... I but would that's delicious. It smells pay, like straight honey. I'd pay 38, the magic number. Can you guys just yep. uh, it And I would 100% place. buy 12 of those. Easy, e- yeah. That's an easy 12 for me. Oh, yeah. I drink that every week. Yeah. I think it's pretty, relatively well affordable. I think it's like 30 bucks. Wow. Well, I think it's good price. That's fine. It's, that's what it's there for. That's what the wine sucks for. I've pulled the sock up so you can't see the neck label. <laughs> After last episode's cheating round. Yeah, I respect oh, it, yeah. Bit locked up. Well, yeah. this is... I, I love that we've got like, both games of options. We've just gone, oh, this wow. is freaking rich. Yeah, um, okay. By so, looking at it. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah, so she's... I picked this purely out. I saw this and I went, fuck yeah, nostalgia. This is great. Yep. Um, All right. Okay, so uh, do we reckon it's an old world or a new world wine? I think this is a new world this wine. This is a new world wine. I agree. It is a new world wine. <laughs> cool. Let me get up my questions. All right. Do we believe this wine is from Chile, mm-hmm. Canada, mm-hmm. New Zealand, mm-hmm. or Australia? I think this is from Australia. This is from Australia. Uh, yeah, I, I'd be inclined to agree. <laughs> I, think it's from I really oh respect God, we, need the... let, we need to let Henry answer first. Yeah, lo- yeah, if this came from Canada, Canada, this is true. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, it is an Australian wine. Cool. Straight up strawberry jam. Uh, what state do you reckon it's from? Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, or Tasmania? I think we got four options on these, which is yeah, same. kind of good. I yeah. think it's from uh, South Australia. I think it's from South Australia. Yeah, it's from South Australia. It is from South Australia. Well mm. done. I'm, yeah. Okay. Which region do you believe it to be from? The Barossa, the Coonawarra, or Clare Valley? Um, I think it's from Coonawarra. I agree. I also think this is from it Coonawarra. It is. <laughs> Would you go vintage or variety next? Variety. 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 Okay. Is it a Malbec? Mm. Is it a Cab Franc? Mm. Is it a Merlot? Mm. Or is it a Cab Sav? Mm. I think it's Malbec. I want to say Malbec too. Too late, I already did. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to Cabernet. I'm going Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon. And you're sticking with Malbec? Yeah. You're wrong. Um, <laughs> it is a Cabernet. Cabernet. A Cabernet Savin. Cab Sav. <laughs> Cabernet. <laughs> um, all right. What vintage do you believe it to be? 1998. 2002, 2009, 2013. I think it's 2009 because it was a warm year. And that, that, that is a bit of, bit, of, bit of warmth to it. So 2013. And you said 2009, Brendan? Yeah. And Noah, your guess is? Fuck it, 98. 1998. All right. And and which which producer? Wait, what was the year? What was the year? Oh, it was two thousand nine. Oh, mm. there you go. Yeah. I win. Yeah, yeah, it was two thousand nine. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats, sick. Um, wow. Is it a? Sorry, let me just okay, get can up I, some can producers. I just, no, rather than giving us options of producers, can you? I, I mean, I, I already have one in my head. Okay. Yeah, same. Yep. I don't. I think I think we mentioned it on this show. We I did. think we did. I think this is Magella. I it agree. is a Magella two thousand and nine. Cab Sav. Magella. Magella. I might have actually got the vintage wrong. Hang on, let me double check. 
Magella. It's 2008. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we'll give it to him. Give it to him. I really like it. I That's think a good it's one. Really tasty. Oh, I smelt one. it and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah this is jam. thick. I, this is an icon. Um, I reckon it's in a weird spot at the minute. I think it's too young still. Oh, I think I don't it's know. just about to start. Like, it's one of those weird ones. Is that like the Casper, the friendly ghost? It kind yeah. of like ducks down, and we're not too sure whether it's it's ducking down and going to come back up, or it was up maybe like a couple so, of, a couple of years ago. I. I when I, These wines when I say I'm time. scared of heavier wines, this is exactly what I mean by that. Yeah. I see this and go, I'm going to fucking hate yeah, this. Well, yeah, like you liked the Cabernet we had on the last podcast, correct? Mm. Yeah. That's a very this is the inverse kind of yeah. thing of that. So this is different. something my dad would pass to me and go, you need to appreciate this. And I would go, it tastes like a steak, Scott. It yeah, does it, taste yeah, like yeah. a skate steak, Scott. It does yeah. taste like a skate, Scott. <laughs> yeah, it does it, taste no, like a skate steak, It's really, steak, but it's like... I feel like I've just gotten a teaspoon and dug into a jar of Cotty's like blackberry jam. Yeah. Yeah, legit. Yeah, covered with bacon fat and like yeah, like, it's like like, like, beef like beefy yeah. beefy berries. It is. It is meaty. They should rename yeah. this to Magella Beefy Berries. Yeah. <laughs> Probably so. Use his full name. <laughs> it's Mister Magella Beefy Berries to you. I think I've come around to that sort of one. I'm yeah, weirdly into that. I it's, think it's great. I it's, think it's yeah. really good. It's not, not bad super, for a Friday. It's not super my thing, but with like the proper meal, I would probably get around it. But yeah. just by itself, I'm like, this is a little I bit I want like, like a proper, like slow cooked yeah, rich Yeah, like, a, like a lamb ragu. Yeah. I'd take a packet of Doritos and drink this. <laughs> like, <laughs> as, long as, it's cold. as long as it's cold outside, I'd happily drink that. There's so much lactones here. It's oh, like, yeah. It's milky. It's milky. So milky. This, this is the uh, iconic Aussie style, though. We just chuck milk shit. Yeah. Like, mm. No, we don't chuck milk shit. We just make wines very milkily. Milkily. Yeah. yeah. Now, I- we're just about out of time. Do you want to run through a couple of Discord questions? Discord questions. I reckon we've got time. Do we have time for one or two? Yeah, yeah, cool. Sure do. Uh, oh, oh, sweet. I've got a I'm couple. Sorry. Of course, if you guys want to um, have any questions answered on the podcast or the show, please keep um, them coming. Keep them coming on the ask us, ask us anything um, uh, a- sub channel a- on the Discord. Hashtag AMA. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So these have come through. So, are there any trends in the Australian viticultural world that are aimed at adjusting to climate change uh, and being what seems to be an already quite warm region? I think they're talking about um, maybe um, Adelaide Hills or Barossa. Great vinely speaking. Are there any concerns about current varieties not handling the new extremes or the overall production being lower or less quality? And equally on the opposite, do the warmer, drier conditions somehow bring other qualities to the wine? I guess I probably should answer this one. I have no comments. Yeah, no, you got... You got <laughs> a bit of a nerdy Take one. Take it away, Jim. Yeah, you guys... Go first, yeah. Anything you get wrong, Gemma and I will hop in. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll fact check. So yeah. are there concerns about uh, increasing temperatures, uh, uh, reducing yield and quality? Yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 There you are, are indeed yeah. concerns. Yes. Yeah, concerns. The, like the first thing to note is that this is not exclusive to Australia. This is mm. everywhere. Global like, warming's it's the globe that's warming. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we weren't gonna get content with these weird questions. Yeah. Uh, these really in-depth questions I should say. Sorry. Oh look, yeah, currently like Canada's on fire and Sonoma Coast is covered in smoke. Like they, mm. this is not a um, spicy yeah. time. Yeah, like I, I, I literally not. just was speaking to uh, someone from Brazil this morning and then I said yeah we had a really weird winter it was 35 degrees Eek. and it's like oh, that's not fucking winter bros um, so there I think the, it's not an exclusive to Australia issue so I think with the varieties that we already planted here that weren't appropriate in the first place what we're seeing is that the, where we were the first against the like, first through the wall I guess as far as like seeing the issues pop up in wine whereas like everyone's like man these wines are really ripe and jammy yeah. and then immediately people are like that's kind of outside the norm that's really cool that makes Australian wine unique and now we're seeing is like oh that's actually not what not the grapes are supposed thing. to look yeah. like and now we're seeing all of the old world countries start to make wines that look like Australian wines and like, they're also tackling like climate change really differently because like for example in Australia we don't have Appalachian so no. we can we can just very quickly change a variety yeah whereas obviously with Bordeaux the more famous one where they're now allowed Tariga and a bunch of other great yeah. varieties into the blend but I mean Bordeaux 
have you seen like their balloon initiative with like mm-hmm. cloud seeding yeah uh, using the, these like multi-million dollar balloon things in shabley they're more concerned now about uh big hails yeah and frost uh in spot fires everywhere and stuff equally you know as to the qualities of wine champagne's probably never been better um like it's consistently riper now um you know, yeah so those colder fringes being a little bit warmer um are benefiting yeah but then the things that were maybe on the warmer fringe are suffering and the different you know we talk about less so about global warming uh than maybe climate change because in australia the issue with climate change is a lack of water but the issue with climate change in somewhere like shabbily isn't water yeah um it's it's hailstorms being so much more intense yeah mm. and um, earlier and earlier so they can't really plan for it and the planting's there you know in bordeaux they've obviously got to a point where like this whole thing we don't have any sort of mechanism to be able to patch onto this system that we've got which is controlled by the fact that they have ablation yeah. so we're gonna have to change that yeah and i guess as far as like what the australian industry is doing uh viticulturally well uh look at the awrs they're investing in sunscreen for uh I guess mm. for uh, Shiraz. So I thought you meant that, like they're investing in sunscreen for the like the pickers. Yeah. Oh no 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 absolutely Just really not. Really no, making no, 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 no. sure that our not, people no. working out on the land are sun smart because they're putting yeah. sunscreen on grapes. Yeah, this is this, this is an initiative that hilarious. they did. They, they started doing this like a long time ago. And how is um, it working out for them? Uh, I don't I don't know the results <laughs> as it it's should because it's, it's, it's silly. It's a blunt instrument for something that we have the ability like like we've started on the back foot in Australia where what we planted really probably wasn't, wasn't meant really to meant to be there. Yeah. Um. And so it's any like sort of shift fix. in that climate is that's meant, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. They've just so, slapped a bandaid on it. Ah, sunscreen's good enough. The real switch now is varieties and and what Brendan was saying. Now we don't have a lot appellations. We can change the varieties kind of at uh, at, at our whim and it'll take us a few years. We'll lose like growers will lose income based on like you know having to graft over they won't be able to produce fruit from those vines for several years and then mm. once it's over it's great um, and then drought resistant root stocks are a big thing of course um, in Australia as well so they're making sure that the vines themselves need less water to survive and then grafting a uh, drought hardy variety on top of that that's probably a really good way forward and there are a lot of people doing that like we're looking at of course we're talking about the Riverland what we do with Unico like that is a major thing and people like Ashley Ratcliffe are working with growers to move more to Fiano and Nero and multiple Chiano and all these different things and and then, of course, you've got, like, who's leading the quality charge? Like, you've got McLaren Bell, who's two, the, the key, uh, not the most widely planted red grape, but the most famed red grape, most popular red grape, Grenache, is incredibly drought resistant. Mm. And then the number one planted white grape is Fiano, which is, of course, incredibly drought resistant. And those are the two wines that are really leading the charge, both uh, like across the country as far as high quality. Mm. And that's those are the ones that are selling in cellar doors and that's encouraging more plantings like Fiano's now what is like one of the, the varieties that we're seeing planted the most in Australia mm-hmm. as far as yeah. new plantings what people are shifting towards they're taking their you know Chardonnay their Sauvignon Blanc plantings particularly Sauvignon Blanc mm-hmm. um, um, and planting to Fiano instead forgive me for sounding ignorant uh, but you would just think to plant things that make sense for where you're planting them. But like, we didn't know all of this data right, a long right, time ago. Like, we're now knowing yeah, this. Yeah, because it's like, why would you plant something that needs a lot of water in an area it. that's because prone to drought? Fish. Yeah, so that's which, crazy. Yeah, when you start it, like it's typical business methodology, which is like you know if you're going to make anything, make sure there's a market for it. That's so quiet. you find the market need first, and then you cater for that. Right. There was a market need for. Um, you know, bigger, richer styles of wine, um, you know, that Australia broke through the UK in the 80s and then mm. that, that propelled a whole industry and then it was just iterations from there. Everyone just kind of like, well, this is what success looks That's like. We're works. just going to do, yeah. do this. Yeah. Um, I mean, conversely to like the, uh, you know, because we're Adelaide Hills, where we're situated, is pretty well insulated from, and not, not isolated, but insulated from uh, climate changes ha- occurring. Barossa's, right. you know, a lot more exposed. Riverland is extremely exposed mm. part of the reason why we like working in the riverland is because like we get it's sort of like the bleeding edge of what's happening on the hot fringe of winemaking yeah. but equally like tasmanian wines like the amount of land that's being purchased up in places like um like around uh, north island um like japan uh, mm. a lot of land being acquired in new zealand by like 
Bur- Burgundian producers, like they're looking yeah. abroad. So like to- buy cold now, so when it's warmer later, you'll be able to grow your uh, One hundred percent. Yeah, this is this is what's a bit morbid, but yeah, that's hey, true. What right? we're, what we've been seeing, I think, over the last decade Antarctic is everyone's Shiraz with the celebration of cool climate. <laughs> yeah, like cool climates become the trendy thing. Yeah. So everyone's just been chasing higher and higher up the mountain, but there's yeah. got to be a certain point where it's like the mountains fucking. Yeah. So what is it? Well, it's Sweden. Sweden Not, uh, yeah. is planting grape varieties because they can start. They can now ripen grapes in Sweden. Jesus. They can that's ripen tragic. grapes in, in Wales. That means it's too warm. You know, it's yeah, getting that's, that's it. That's too warm. It's hot. Yeah. 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 At what point, and this is purely hypothetical, where we we have to be so involved in the process of like planting and growing, do we just go, this isn't? As in, we can't. Yeah, this isn't it's fucking not working. Like the amount of water we have to use to offset the heat or the amount we have it's to- It's driven by cost. It'll yeah, be it'll be economical. Yeah, it'll just be, there's no money yeah, in well, it. Yeah, when it's too expensive and you're not making that money back, you, you just go, well, this isn't So it's why we, we find, uh, at least because we're quite leveraged in this space, is we, l- we find drought years really bittersweet because we try to convince growers that they need to be planting better stuff. But what ultimately ends up happening is they see a 20, 30 something telling a seventh or fifth generation grower, um, you know, how to do their job better, even though they've got a failing farm. Uh, and essentially what, what ends up happening is they don't change and then a drought comes along. And they see their neighbor or neighbor's neighbor who's planted something that is much more climate appropriate not having to use what little water that they've already mm. got in a drought yeah. year. Uh, don't need to buy water in because buying water in drought years gets very expensive. Absolutely. Uh, and they're going, oh, well, we don't make any money off this crop this year because it never got bought by a winery. And then that family is struggling even further or to the point of having to sell their, their farm. Um, and what ends up happening after that uh, in the debrief is that they start going, well, maybe we do need to start planting this stuff. So it's bittersweet because we don't want to see any grower or farming family ever go through something that's that's already tougher than farming already is. Yeah. But sometimes that's the, the price that you have to pay to yeah, change someone's inherent behaviour. People don't know till it's right in front of them. Yeah, Correct. Growing alternate varieties is kind of like being the salesman for like mouse poison and you don't want people to have mice problems but if yeah. people don't have mice problems yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't need your mouse poison <laughs> <laughs> so if your varieties aren't fucked you won't need yes. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah there is there is the sweetness I guess with those warm vintages as well as like in the Adelaide Hills like when we have super hot years which is you know mm. probably once or twice every five years yeah like all of our mates, you know, making Pinot Noir and Chardonnay down the street, they're like, "Fuck, this year was shit." We got really, just went like, "Fucking best vintage like on record, great. man!" <laughs> like yeah, yeah. we just yeah. go, and then when they go, "Oh man, it was a perfect season. It was cool. It was brilliant." And that's like, we're happens, like oh, and we're just like, "Ah, oh, bit bit peaky acid this year." Yeah. Um. So there is that duality, but what we see, I think, more often than not, is that the the drought years outweigh the cool years. I think people yeah. are just generally more open to accepting change at this point, and I don't think we really have a choice and that's to do with everything climate change like oh uh, you'd be surprised like like there is that divide between sort of rural farming families that, oh that yeah i exist guess so. in their own and, and, and really hard to reach out and to media outlets and yeah it don't really stuff. help so there's still yeah. there is still that divide but it, we are seeing a a increasing sort of shift in that tide for sure yeah yeah, 100%. yeah. do we have time for another question because we, i think we oh, went we, pretty are we pushing this one will yeah. be a quick one. Super quick one. Super quick one. Uh, Fuck it. I understand that red wines are often aged for specific reasons, often in the case of wines with high tannin. So these are red wines. Uh, what are the reasons, though, that whites are aged? And what is the criteria for, for age-worthy whites? So they get oaky? It depends. I have no information. Uh, <laughs> no, no, wait, do, do, you, do you have an idea? Why do white wines get aged? Yeah. Well, yeah, why do people yeah age them? And what's what's the sort of prerequisites that would say, hey, this white wine is age worthy? It's got lactones. Uh, you would be aging your white wines to develop more structure and texture through yep. them. And the grapes that are worthy of that would be grapes that are actually going to change in a positive way over time. So things like Chardonnay or... I mean, you get a little bit of aged Riesling, but like, I don't, like Sauvignon Blanc and stuff like that, which is sort of mm. pump it out, sell it to the yeah. masses and make it next year. Yeah. Is it is it sort of the more serious winemaking grapes that get aged because the winemakers want to play around with themselves? There's kind of, there's a... There- <laughs> like, is that not kind of it? No, there, no there's, a, there's a few reasons for it. I think probably the best way to look at it is, I guess, breaking it down by the... Um, 
I guess, the style of the wine. And I think the probably the best wines that age really well, if we're looking at red wines, the best wines that age particularly well, I think, are both Cabernet mm. and Bordeaux blends and Nebbiolo. And the two things that both those varieties have in common is a tannin, yeah, as, as has been previously mentioned, but there's also acidity. Both those wines really young have heaps of acidity, so they got mouth puckering, like saliva inducing mm. acidity. And like the tannins soften over time? Is that yeah. the, the term? They, they break down and yeah. kind of even out and they become very, very smooth um, mm. rather than being harsh and like mouth Grippy. clawing so and drying. So in, in 2008, it was pretty safe to say that this would have been really chock full of tannin and acid. Yeah, 100%. And now it's really round and yeah. smooth yeah. and yeah. fuzzy. And what's exactly. happening in the bottles, like like from a from a technical standpoint, is actually quite interesting. And, it's, mm. and also quite basic. It's just oxygen. Yeah, uh, right. The acidity actually doesn't change at all. So the acidity will still be technically elevated. It's just the perception of it. Yep. Uh, yeah, sure. Will, will change because of the body and, and texture structure will will change over time. Tannins, anthocyanins, which is the the actual like a uh, molecule, um, binds to oxygen. So it can actually be a really good preservative. Tannin, yes. tannin is a preservative. Um, they bind to oxygen, which allows them to actually bind to each other. And they polymerize, called polymerized chains, long chain tannins. And eventually they just get so heavy, they drop out of solution that forms the sediment inside bottles. Whoa. Yeah, that's how the sediment happens. Yeah. And, and it, so it's an actual physical removing of the tannin. Yeah, what, like it's not just some sort of like weird mouth filled thing. Like the tannins are physically it, dropping, dropping out, out of the but wine. But it's that's happening crazy. at such a uniform rate that um, it's sort of like if you could grab, say here's like four tannins, but then we grab the middle bits out of each of those four, suddenly you've got eight. Then you grab the middle bits and you've got 16, right? And it just keeps going, or 64. The tannins actually become a lot more in this this process, basically become uh, a lot smoother because the actual physical perception is that they're, they're halving or doubling every single yeah. time. So they're getting higher resolution. That's crazy. That's yeah. so cool. So yeah, that's definitely the tannin component. With the acidity, that kind of just keeps the wine feeling fresh. Mm. So the the wines with the best like white wines that age particularly well, um, I believe, uh, probably the, the the varieties that you mentioned, it probably Riesling and Chardonnay, are the two predominant Shen- ones. Shannon be massive. Shannon's a massive huge. one as well. Yeah. Uh, probably le- but a bit more obscure. Left oh, only the cool kids are drinking aged Shannon, um, but um, like. German Riesling, uh, you know, great, really high acid Riesling from Australia, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They age for 20 years plus. Uh, Semion from Hunter mm-hmm. Valley ages mm-hmm. like fucking nothing. Sweet wines as well. Sweet, Sweet wines, wines as well, yeah, wine. because sugar's another preservative as well. Tokai, um, ice wines. Do they, yeah. um, do they age champagne? Because I know you can get really yep. old, expensive that champagne. Was the, that was the one I was going to say. Like, champagne is one of the best wines to age for the long term because it's so yeah. high in acid. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought you were going to say like it's aged, but it probably Sh- should Sh- be. Chardonnay is the one where I actually struggle with like the maturation. Mm-hmm. Not with the exception of, of sparkling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of Chardonnay is aged because it is like prestigious, right? Like that 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 leads people to kind of go, oh, I've got an old, you know, uh, a, a, yeah. it's the admirability. Like of it's being it's able the, to, like, clout. the clout. Yeah, the clout there. Um, there can are be very good. Those, there are you know it, those kind of cool climate. Like Chablis is the best one because mm. like so, so, sometimes we drink Chablis and it tastes like raising. It's so puckeringly acidic and it's like very simple. It's like oh, this needs some time. And then eventually, after a decade, you're going, oh man, this is actually starting to hit its straps. It's got those nutty, savory components mm. that really match the acidity as that's kept over the period of time uh, and then in cool climate regions and stuff like that I, I took I tasted like a Adelaide Hills Piccadilly Chardonnay the other week and I was like man that's good this has got 15 years easy mm. it's mm. just so good it was such like nice. green apple freshness mm. um, but yeah so uh, Riesling is Riesling and Semi are the ones I'd, I'd be looking for as far as like ageability because they've just got so much acid and they will just in, like they the flavours that you'll taste initially will be so will still kind of be there but then they just encompass more. Whereas I think with a lot of Chardonnay is that that initial flavor kind of dissipates quite quickly and then yeah. moves towards that kind of more nutty, mealy, mm. like yogurty richness, which is, yeah, like Chardonnay in the first couple of years is generally the best. But um, yeah, so a lot of acid- 30-year-old Chardonnay is probably going to be pretty rank. Depending on where it's made and who made it and the acidity and all that kind of it's, different It's just thing. hard to say. Uh, so rather than rank, I'd say more like curio. Yeah, like it becomes more of a curio. You might go like, "That's really interesting. I'll have a glass. I won't have a whole bottle." Like yeah. it becomes yeah. like a curio. What's thing. happened to it? Rank. What's happened to this? Huh. Last 30 years? Where did this yeah. go they wrong? Will, they will look more like the the Roussan that we had on the show. Yeah. Mm. 
So yeah, like, I'm fascinated to know what happens with orange wines because you now you've got the, right. like, the confluence of both acidity that and tannin. Is it. So Gross. what's the oldest bottle of Esoterico that we have? Like how old is it? Oh, 2014? 14, 14 or 15? Yeah, so next year it's 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. We could it's 10 be. years old we this should, year, actually. 10 years uh, old this year, yeah. fucking crack it open and see Why, We cracked happens. open it. Uh, so Esoterico, I think, looks pretty good after about five years and then it mm. starts to... Because we don't, it's not like super tannic. No. And also, it's not a high acid. It's not a like, high acid yeah. wine as well. Right. So it doesn't so have what, the erythritol. What, is, there, what to is there to alter over uh, time? So, yeah, exactly. Like, like it'll be tannin softening, and the flavors also change completely and develop entirely of their own thing. But, like, Esoterico mm. itself is simply not crafted with exceptionally high acidity no. to allow for that. Yeah. Like, but you look at, say, like Robola Giala, which is a great variety from uh, northern Italy uh, and, like, around Slovenia. Um, and you've got producers like Radicon who actually pre-mature their orange wines wow. for numbers of years, or Gravna as well down in Sicily. Hmm. Um, sorry, Gravna up up north, but really. uh, also you've got Coles in Sicily that do a really good job down there as well. Cool. So, as far yeah. as internally, um, our wine terracotta will be the yeah. one to look for <gasps> um, aging, because it's got it's really high in tannin, and it's got great acidity too mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's why i'm particularly excited about it that's got some great aging potential. when i first started i was looking for a bottle of wine to buy and um i said i liked esoteric esoteric wine. i don't know if you remember this but you recommended terracotta because it was esoteric's classy older sister mm. it is <laughs> yeah. and i really enjoyed that description um, yeah. all, all right, right. Like, we're, we're over yeah, time. Yeah, we're definitely over time. So the answer <laughs> is Semyon and Riesling. Fear whites. Yeah. And mostly, mostly acidity as to why uh, and the development of the, the those flavors. So you want acid yeah. and tannin if you want to age a nice white wine. Just in general. Just yeah, aging wine. Aging, aging, aging wine. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having a chat. That was fun. We'll see you in probably, in fact, we'll probably won't do another of these for like two months. For a little while. Really? Yeah, a little while. You're, You're away uh, for a while, hey? Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you guys. See you next time. Ciao. Bye. Billy.